You know, I thank God for Brother Hiram to give that testimony. We need to hear about the things that God is doing among us. We don't often testify enough, and it's by our testimonies that we gain victory over the enemy. We overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Amen? And there's one thing that stood out to me out of what he said was seeing the love demonstrated to him. It was funny to him. You know, we're a little funny about receiving love. We're a little funny about receiving love. Somebody do something nice to you, you want to know what's the motive, what's the angle, what you, what you trying to get at. But there's something we don't, we don't understand. There's a blocker. I can even feel it in the room already before I'm even ready to preach the subject. You don't even know what I'm about to preach, but I already feel the blocker and the matter of love. And what you don't understand is that having this blocker and receiving love, you are missing out on so much miraculous power that God is trying to get to you, that God is trying to do in and through you, but you have conditioned yourself not to receive love. And because of that, that's the chasm, that's the blockage, that's the separation that stands between you and God. It's not the fact that God don't love you, it's the fact that you think you're unlovable. It's not the fact that God don't love you or can't do miracles, but you, fa- you think you're not worthy of God working in you, God not helping you. And I praise God for silence because that's the amen of the soul. And the Spirit of the Lord is reaching out this morning to help you to understand that his love for you is just like pure gold. For you to understand the great lengths which God has done to give to you his love that you may experience and that you may know him. It is his desire. It is his design. God loves you and God wants a relationship with you. God doesn't want church from you. God wants a relationship with you. He wants a relationship with you. Just like you like holding your little girlfriend hand or your boyfriend hand or your husband hand and y'all sitting there googly eyed and you so pretty. (laughs) That God want that from you. It's okay to laugh. God want that from you. He want you to walk around your house and think about his goodness and you experience that presence that walks on you. He wants you to lay down in the midnight hour when you wet your pillow and you experience a comfort that that covers your soul. And dries the tears up. Y'all been desperate to feel the presence of God. And I said, I can't feel him. I want to feel him so bad, but I can't feel him. God told me something the other day. He said, Ashley, you will leave me before I leave you. And oftentimes you have left me before I've left you. The moment he said it to me, I felt his presence so strong on me. And I I repented because I realized it's me that's leaving. It ain't you. It's me. God's love for you is so strong. It's more than you can comprehend. The love of God will leave you weeping in a puddle of tears. And that is the love that's trying to invade your heart. And it's on assignment for your life. The love of God is on an assignment for your life. The love of God is on an assignment for your life. The love of God is on an assignment for your life. To break every shackle, to loose every fetter, to loose every chain, to set you free from the snares of the enemy, to open your eyes to the revelation of who Jesus is, to flood your heart, to lift the burden, to give beauty for ashes, joy for pain. It's the love of God. It's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The love of God is reaching to you. Stand to your feet. Ah, yeah, 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 yo. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Lord, help me get through this. 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love. 
But perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. You can sit down. Today's sermon topic, this is a movie that we're going to do in reverse. I just gave you the ending, and we're going to go back and rewind the tape on you. But today's sermon topic, probably a good familiar one, is what's love got to do with it? What's love got to do with it? So let's rewind the tape and let's put some context to this. First John chapter 4 opens up, and he opens up with a very interesting subject. And he opens up talking about testing the spirits. Now, how do we get from love to testing the spirits? Well, let's take the journey. He opens up and he says that you ought to test the spirits to see whether they are of God. And so he, he calls the, the, this passage or this particular chapter opens up with a call to discernment. Glory to God. A call to discernment for the believer to have a great discernment about what is going on around them. A discernment about what spirit they are engaging. A discernment about the people that they engage. A discernment about the information that they receive. A discernment about the gospel that they hear. That it is the, the wisdom and the design of the spirit for the believer to have a sharp, keen discernment. You are not to be a believer and to have your mind turned off. This is not something you check off a box. If you're doing that, then you are not in God. You are not truly in the faith. You're not really walking in the spirit. You are in religion. You are in tradition. And you are not necessarily in relationship with God. But it is the design of the spirit that you walk and be filled with his spirit. And that you have a discernment. You have a, a, a measuring rod. You have a plumb line system to discern everything that comes your pathway. To know and to have a discernment and a discrimination of what is of God and what is not of the Lord. That is the design for the believers. And so the scripture says to test every spirit, test everything that comes your way. And he gives us kind of a litmus test of how we can test our things. And I'll give this briefly and we'll get to our, our point. And what does he say? How, do, how can I test the spirits to see whether they are of God? Well, in verses 2 and 3 of 1 John chapter 4, he lets us know the one way I can test everything is by the language. It's by language, right? You know, if you let people talk enough, they'll tell on themselves. Mm -hmm. People love to hear themselves talk, and we do too. And so if you let, let people talk enough, you'll know what's in their heart. If you let people talk enough, you'll know what's going on in their spirit. You let people talk enough, you'll know exactly where they are. You don't get to ask no questions. Just let them talk. Let them rant on. And so he says, you'll know the spirit that any person or any body that's teaching you that they're under based upon their language. Because he said, if you test the spirits, he said, if anyone would confess that Jesus Christ has not come in the flesh, then that person is not of God. So you know by their confession who, who they are. You hear how quiet this church is? I love every bit of it. It's all right. You know by the confession whether this person is a believer or not. You became a believer by your confession. It's your language that helps you understand that. Not only is it your language. He said also we can tell what spirit is operating by our listening. Who we listen to. Because he says, those who are of the world, listen to those who are of the world. And those who are of the spirit, listen to those who are of the spirit. So, pastor, I'm starting to learn now, it's okay not to get upset when people don't listen to me when I preach. You just let me know where you are, and I'm praying for you, right? Those who are of the spirit, listen to the things of the spirit. Those of the flesh, listen to the things of the flesh, right? That's it. what's in you. See, okay, I, I, apple can't bring forth oranges, right? An apple tree don't bring forth oranges. It's an apple tree bring forth apples, okay? It's very simple. And so what's in you is what you're going to produce. And so based upon what you say and based upon what you listen to, let me know what spirit is operating in you. And so he gives us this discernment. This is how we can know. But here's another thing I never realized or never thought about. This being a tool or a plumb line system of discernment. Who knew that love could be a discern, a measuring rod of discerning a spirit. Because it seems as if that the passage is disjointed. When I read it, I was like, well, how do we go from discerning spirits to loving everybody? Because it's another measuring rod. Because he says in verse, verse 7, let's go, 1 John 4, 7. He says this, what did he say? Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. So first and foremost, what's love got to do with it? We, we we're commanded and supposed to love each other. We all know that the scripture says that the world will know us based upon our love one to another. 
We are identified as believers based upon love. Well, why? Love is from God. Now, what does the scripture say? Right? He says, everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. So this particular love is not just a, a worldly sense of love. It's not a phileo love, not a, a brotherly love. It's not, you know, the love wins kind of love. It's not, you know, the love standard. that Because, you know, the, the, the world loves these type of passages. They, they love that God is love. So accept me for who I am and accept any standard and accept me for who I am. That's not God and that's not his love. The Bible says those, the love of God Those who are in God are born of God. I'm a Harris. I was born a Harris. I ain't going to be nothing but a Harris. Okay? I am the product of Alton Milton. My sister, I saw that. Thank you. She said, that's right. Tell them. That's what we are. We Harrises. Huh? Come on. Alfred Milton Harris is my daddy. Alfred Milton Harris is with Jesus now. But let me tell you something. As I grow more and more and more, I see nothing but the DNA of Alfred Milton Harris coming out of me. I, I say certain things about, oh, there you go. There you go, Alpha Milton Harris. And sometimes I say something, there you go, Mary Ann Harris coming out of my mouth. I, I, because I'm born of him. Because I'm born of her. I bear her DNA. I bear his DNA. I got their characteristics. I got some of their traits. I got some of their attitude. Uh-oh, I got some of their inflections. I got some of their short-temperedness. I inherited that because I was born of them. Those who are of God. Love is a marker of their spirit because they are born of God. See, it's not something you just do because you're commanded to do. It's got to be birthed in you. You got to be born again. And when you are born again, you are born of love because God is love. The nature of God is love. Just as much as the nature of God is holy, the nature of God is love. So the power to love one another comes from being born again. Because he says those who love everyone, they are born of God and they know God. Verse 8. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So let's unpack this love thing, right? Let's talk about love and really understand the love of God, right? Love has a ministry, love, love, we're going, love has a manifestation, right? Love has a manifestation, love has a ministry, love has a mission. That's where we're going. I'm giving you the roadmap already just in case we get lost on the way. Love has a manifestation, love has a ministry, and love has a mission. And we're going to understand that it's all in this particular passage. What is the manifestation of love? God is love according to the passage at uh, the end of chapter, uh, verse 8. But in verse 9, he begins to tell us that love has a manifestation. What is this? In this, the love of God was manifested toward us. That God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. What is the manifestation of the love of God? The manifestation of the love of God is Jesus. The manifestation of the love of God is Jesus. No one has seen God. No one has known God. The only God that sits in the bosom of the Father, he has revealed him. He has explained him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish. Take your time and slow back because I know we learned that in Sunday school. So now we can quote it off the cuff and we're too familiar with the scriptures. So we don't sit in the weightiness of that because John 3.16 can still, can still wreck you in your pew. That God so loved the world. That God so loved the world. What was his response? A manifestation. He gave his only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What kindness is that? That's nothing but grace. Nothing but mercy. It's not even fair. It's love extended that whosoever would receive this grace would have life 
in life abundantly. The manifestation of God's love is Jesus. I never forget I had a conversation with a friend of mine, and he asked me, you know, he said, you know, we love God. I said, I do love God. We love Jesus. I love Jesus. Yes. And he said, now, have you ever, you know, we know Jesus as God. Yes, Jesus is God. Absolutely. And, you know, he said, have you ever thought about Jesus, God, Jesus being the expression of God's thoughts towards you? I said, yeah. Wait, whoa, whoa. That hit me somewhere. Have I ever thought about Jesus being the expression of God's thoughts toward me? Because sometimes when we think about God, we think about fire, brimstone, the earth ground opening up, swallowing up the children of Israel, hard discipline. We think about wrath and judgment and death, and all these things are part of that. But have you ever thought about Jesus being the expression of God's thoughts towards you? That God would give up of himself, die a sinful death, raise from the dead so that you could have a relationship with him. And you sit and ask yourself, what does God think about me? What does God think about me? What does God feel? What is his sentiments toward me? And most of us think he's angry. He's wrathful. He's vengeful. He's ready to, to appease himself by destroying me. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son in the world to condemn the world. But through him that the world might be saved. God, the love of God has been made manifest. You ain't got to question it no more. You ain't got to search for it no more. It has been made manifest through the ministry work of the Lord Jesus Christ. God has revealed his heart concerning you. That God gave of himself and suffered the worst death that you can possibly ever imagine. So that you may have fellowship and relationship. I thought there would be at least one amen in the house of God. Of people who say they saved and believe God. It's too quiet for people who say they saved. Is there a thank you? We too stiff neck about the gospel. What's wrong with us? What's wrong with us? Am I wrong? What's wrong? Y'all act like I, I cussed your mama out. I say, God love you. Y'all like... All that God did, we got to question whether God loved you or not. He made that love manifested by the cross, by the death, burial, and resurrection. Love has been manifested so that you can have relationship with him. That love manifestation of the love of God is Jesus. He said that God sent his son in the world to do what? That through him, that through him, you may what? You might live. See, Pastor. I'll talk to you because I think you're my friend today. I'll preach to you. It's just you and I, okay? They can listen to it if they want to. I don't know about you, but I kind of realized that as believers, we had this fascination with death. And I'm not saying that as believers, we don't die to ourselves. Scripture tells us to. Take up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. But I think we're so stuck in death, we don't know how to live. We so stuck and put this down and stop this and stop this. You know why? Because we keep identifying with the flesh. We identify more with our sinful nature than that with the spirit. We identify more with the flesh than we do with the spirit. What, whoa, Jesus, help the church, help us church, help the church, help a modern day church that identifies more with flesh than she do with the Holy Spirit. Because we don't understand and know who we are. We identify more with our own passions. I'm going to take my glasses off. That way you can't say I'm looking at anybody. We, we identify more with our passions. We identify more with our pleasures than the pleasure of God. Than the things of the spirit. And because we are stuck in the things of the flesh, which we were supposed to crucify ourselves to, we are stuck in a perpetual death. And which tells us that we are immature. We don't understand love because he called us to live in and through him. God said, I come that you may have life and life abundantly. He said, I called you to be a living sacrifice, 
holy and acceptable. That you can do what? Prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God, which means that there has work for you to do. I got a mission. I got a call. I got a purpose. I want to live in and through your life. This life is on reserve to live so I can live through it. But you haven't gotten to the meat of our relationship because you still had to stop that. Don't touch that. Come over here. Sit down. We are stuck in death because you won't die. And some of y'all, I'm so sick of Pastor Ashley and his sermons. It's because you won't die. I preach what he tell me. And this is what he told me. Because if you die, you live. That's the scripture. And he wants you to experience his pure, unadulterated life. Okay. Love came and manifested itself. That through him you might live. God's desire for you, listen, hear me, hear me, hear me. God's desire for you is to live. I rebuke death in the name of Jesus. I rebuke death in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of death in the name of Jesus. In the hearts and in the minds of the believer and of the saints. The spirit of death that got us attached to death. That got us attached, not even just a physical death, but emotional death, mental death. Come on relational death God came that you may live oh Jesus thank you Lord hallelujah God came that you may live the spirit of the Lord is beckoning your heart to live I set before you life and death choose life live live for God Live in his joy. Live in his happiness. Live in his will. He wants you to live. Love came so that you may have life. Not so that you will be fearful. Walk in the shadow of death. But he came that you may live. And he came that you may have life. Love has a manifestation. Love got a ministry. Love has a ministry. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for the ministry of love. Thank you, Jesus. What is the ministry of love? The Bible says this in the next verse. What verse I mean, God? I'm in verse 10. Thank you. Verse 10, he says, in this is the love of God. Thank you. Glory to God. In this is the love of God. Not that we love God. I'm sorry to the cameraman. I know I'm like a pacing duck, but, you know, like a little shooting target, but. You know, when I get fooled, I can't be still. So y'all going to have to bear with me. I got the Holy Ghost, okay? But in this is the love of God. Not that I came looking for God. Not that I wanted God. Not that I had the capacity for God. But this is the love of God. That he became the initiator of the relationship. This is the love of God. That while I was a sinner, Christ died for the ungodly. Can I preach the gospel this morning? This is the love of God. That when I was dead in my sin and trust, when I was dead in my sin and trespasses, he made me alive. He, <laughs> don't say that. Don't make me Pentecostal in here. Don't do that. By his power, he quickened. He made me alive. The ministry of the love of God is regenerating. It's a regenerating ministry. This is the love of God. Not that we love God, but that God first loved us. What is God's thoughts towards you? This is the love of God. Not you love me, but I love you. I said it to you earlier. You thought I was lying when I said that the Spirit of the Lord said he, the love is reaching to you, but you're not reaching back. This is his love. That God first loved you. And love, and, and, and that, not that we love him, but he loved us. And how did he demonstrate it again? What is his ministry? That he sent his only son to be the propitiation for our sins. We talked about this term before. It's a heavy term, so let's unpack it a little bit. He's the propitiation for our sins. Meaning this, love understood. 
Love understood the fact that there's already an infraction in the relationship. Love has initiated how to repair the relationship. Because, because God is so invested in relationship with you, he saw that you fractured it, but he's invested in the repairment. You fractured it, but he's investment in the repair. You fractured it, he's investment into the repair. The repairment was that he gave himself, his son, to be the propitiation, which means this. The propitiation means the perfect appeasement, meaning that the wrath of God was kindled against me for my infraction. Because God is not just love, God is also holy. And therefore, sin demanded justice. And it was a life for a life. Because I disobeyed his word. Then my life was required of me. And that's the only payment. And even that will still be insufficient to give God what he was due. But Jesus came and stood in the gap. <laughs> Jesus came and stood in the gap. He nominated himself as tribute. And he stood in the gap between the wrath of God and the worshiper. And he absorbs all wrath. <laughs> he absorbs the wrath of God concerning my life. <laughs> he canceled the record of the note that was held against me. Some of us understand that by the liens we experience. You got to lean on your house and you got to lean a debt. You know, the, he canceled the record of debt. You know about canceling debt, do you? He paid a bill that was held against me. Because G, oh God, glory. Because Jesus is the perfect lamb. He was the perfect satisfaction for the glory of God. Because Jesus is pure. Because Jesus is righteous. Because Jesus is holy. He was able to be, <laughs> he was able to come and be manifested in the flesh and give God what he desired. And because the lamb is right. Come on, I'm right. Because the lamb is holy, now I'm holy. Because the lamb was pure, now I'm pure. He became the perfect appeasement, the satisfaction to the wrath of God. And so now what is released into your account is appeasement, perfection, satisfaction. What is God's thoughts towards you? Appeasement, perfection, satisfaction. You ain't working for perfection. You ain't working for satisfaction. You're not working for appeasement. Y'all don't hear me. I don't care. You're not working for satisfaction. You're not working for appeasement. You're not working for it. It's been given to you. It's a vicarious anointing. It's imputed righteousness. It's been given to you through the ministry work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Love has a ministry. And so now the Lord, the scripture tells us we are to continue that ministry. How do we continue that ministry? Now we understand what it means to love your brother. Because out of that depth, out of sitting with that, see, Pastor, this is how I know people don't really have an understanding of the gospel. This is how I know. We really don't got it. Because... Out of all that I just said, that's, we don't digest that. See, I'm going to sit on the step. We're going to have a little conversation. I'm going to take my time today. We stuck in Sunday school. And Sunday school is a blessing. But for a lot of us, it's still a nursery rhyme. So for some of us, the gospel is no better than the little engine that could. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. That's what a lot of us think the gospel is. It's a nice, warm, fuzzy bedtime story. It's a cute story to tell people just to encourage ourselves. But how I know we really ain't got the fact that the wrath of God has been kindled off your life? That God ain't angry with you? That God has nothing but satisfaction and favor for your life? You walk different. You act different. You got a greater appreciation. Your conversations are different. Your behavior becomes different. <laughs> yes, 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 
So the love of the love, the ministry of love continues. And verse 12, he says this, no one, oh, no, no, go back verse, thank you, Lord. Verse 11, beloved, if so, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. So out of the same death, see, we, okay, thank you, Lord. He took us from deficiency to abundance. He took you from deficiency to abundance. And a lot of you are still operating in deficiency when your portion is no longer deficiency, it's abundance. Where you see that at? At the word propitiation. You had a deficit at propitiation. But because of the ministry work of love of Christ that has been done on your behalf, you no longer have a deficit. You have abundance. This is here. Hear me. Hear me. Right. What I'm saying right now is where forgiveness is released. There's a ministry of forgiveness right here. There's a ministry of forgiveness right here. There's a ministry of forgiveness right there. Because they didn't do this and they didn't do that. But when, how can I hold what someone did not do? When I realize that Christ has given me everything I need because he has perfectly fulfilled everything on my behalf and he has taken my deficit and filled it with his glory. So then how can I hold on to someone else's deficit when I'm now in abundance? You hear what I said? No, you didn't really get it. That's okay. Let me say it again. Let me say it this way. I had some people in my life I needed to forgive. I wanted them to be some type of things in my life. And, 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 and I was angry. Because they should have been this. They should have been that. And the Spirit of the Lord began to tell me, yeah, but I was that for you. So if I'm that for you, you, you can release the people for not doing what you think they should have did. Because to hold on to what you think they should have done is to deny the fact that I did it. So which one you want? Do you want power or do you want your privilege? Propitiation causes you to be filled with the power of God so there's no deficit in your life. You are now living out of abundance. Out of that abundance, out of that overflow of love, you love your neighbor. When they get on your nerves, when they come late to church, when they sit in your seat at church, while you're driving home from church, when they preach too long and you don't like their messages, You're supposed to love your neighbor. We love out of that abundance that God has given to us. Is anybody with me? No one, check this out. This is how powerful love is. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us and his love has been perfected in us. Now this is powerful because when I read this in the commentary, we said this. No one's seen God. No one has seen him. But the love of God is so powerful and potent that it makes the God that no one has seen become visible to those that believe him. So somebody said, I want to be hugged by Jesus. You know how I experienced the hug by Jesus? This is how I experienced the hug of Jesus. He said, Lord, get off me. This is how I experienced the hug of Jesus because the church is his body the church is his body the fullness of him and all in all I know it we'll talk about it later so somebody been trying to experience God and your neighbor is an expression of the love of God to them Now you see why the enemy wants us to fuss and fight and bicker so much? Because when I release the love of God, I'm releasing Jesus to my neighbor. So your healing and deliverance and miracle is tied up in your neighbor. So when I don't come to church, I'm withholding from my neighbor. When I choose to be selfish, I'm withholding from the congregation. I'm withholding the glory of God. See, the glory of God don't come just because God want to fill the church. You know, the glory of God come out about the people. It come from the people releasing. Okay. By this we know that we abide in him and that he in us because he has given us of his spirit. See, what everything I'm saying to you, the undertone of what I'm saying to you is the ministry work of the Holy Spirit. None of this is possible without the Holy Spirit being on the inside of you. You got to have the Holy Spirit. 
Verse 14, and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. Verse 16, and we know, okay, and we know and believe, the, and we know and believe that the love that God has for us. I want y'all to know, I, I'm really not, this ain't a show for me. I really read the Bible like this when I'm in my house. I'll be walking around the neighborhood, shh. I, that, that's how it hits me, right? But verse 16, and we know, some verses say, say that we may know the love of God, that we may know and believe the love of God. What's the mission? We talked about the manifestation of love. We talked about the ministry of love. What is the mission of love? The end we know. Whew, and we know and believe. I had an experience one time. I don't know if I was asleep or awake. I really don't. I really don't. But I know I was awake when it, when it was over. I was laying in my bed, and I heard myself say, I don't know. I heard, I heard me. I heard my voice say, I don't know. And then I heard it again. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And it sped up. It kept speeding up. And it was like I was traveling through a time loop. And I heard, kept hearing, I, I don't know. 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 Then I heard the sound of a violent wind. <laughs> It sounded better than that, you know. But it was a sound of this violent wind. Then I heard God say, now you know. And when I woke up, I burst into tears and I started worshiping God. And God said, I just took your spirit through a time loop. Every time you said in yourself, you don't know. And it was me breathing into you so that you would know the love of God. You would know the power of God. To the point to this day, anytime I'm in conversation, I'm great. Say, well, I don't know. I, something made me stop. I say, no, I know. I know that this happened. I say what I know. It is the desire and the design of the Holy Spirit for you to know the love of God. The mission of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the mission of God is for you to know the love that's been made manifest. Not head knowledge. Come on. Come on, not head knowledge, not a bunch of scriptures. Come on, you can quote a bunch of scriptures, but that don't mean your belly know it. No, 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 no. He wants you to know in your belly. He wants you to know in your knower. He wants you to know in your inner man. He wants you to know in the depths of your subconscious and recesses that God loves you and there is no wrath against you. He wants you to know in your intimate part of your soul that you are filled and not empty. He wants you to know down on the inside of your belly that I have nothing but kindness, favor, goodness, and mercy for you. That you are satisfied. That there is a well of satisfaction for you and it's in Jesus Christ it is by way of the Holy Spirit he wants you to know it and believe he said I come that you may know that we may know and believe now watch this the love of God the love that God has for us God is love and he who abides in love abides in God and God in him not only does he want us to know the mission of the love and, and believe, he also wants you to live in it. He wants you to know this love so well. He wants you to live in it. That's what abide means. Make a home. Make a dwelling place. <laughs> Sit down and dwell in it. That you may comprehend with all the saints the height, the width, the breadth, and the depth of the love of God. That's four-dimensional. The height, the width, the breadth, and the depth. That's a house. That's a dwelling place. God wants you to know that you dwell in the love. You live in it. The mission of the love of God is that you live in this love. Verse 17. Love has been by the, oh, come on, go back. And we know, verse 16, and we have known and believed that the, the love that God has for us, God is love, and he who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. Verse 17, love has been perfected among us in this. Okay, how is love perfected in me? By my spirit coming to know. By the Holy Spirit giving me the capacity to believe. By me daily 
living and abiding in the love of God. By me having relationship with him every day and sitting in that love. I, love, I was listening to a song today. Um, what song was it, Lord? It wrecked me up. I don't even remember what it was no more. Um, how he loves us, oh, oh, how he loves us. So the words to that song, it says that, verse 2, how heaven meets earth like a sloppy wet kiss. And then that thing said, and my heart turns violently inside of my chest. I'm walking my dog and, and burst into tears because the power of those words hit my heart. Because have you ever heard, had your heart turn violently inside of your chest by the love of God? <laughs> Has God's spirit ever violently turned something inside of you that stopped you in your tracks and you got over inundated by his presence? I'm trying, y'all, come on. I'm trying to tell you the love of God. I'm walking my dog, y'all. My dog didn't care about nothing but peeing and pooping. And I'm trying to pick up his poop and I'm crying because my heart turned violently inside my chest. Because the love of God. This is how we're perfected in the love. That's how I'm perfected. In that one moment, walking my dog outside. I'm not in church. I'm not preaching. I ain't in a white robe. I ain't talking to nobody. In that moment, I was perfected. <laughs> so many things I got to pray about, Pastor. So many things I need God to help me with. There was so many, so I can give you a list, and I won't because you may take my pastorship back. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you. That'll be stay between me and God. Glory to God. We'll, we'll talk offline. <laughs> Glory to God. So many things I need God to do in me. And in that moment, it was not about any of those things. It was about that he loved me. And that was enough to turn my heart. In that moment, I was perfected. Okay. This is how we are perfected in the love of God. This is how we are perfected in the love of God. Love has been perfected in, uh, among us in this. That we, want, that, what? that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. What is the continued mission of Christ? The continued mission of love is to give your spirit confidence. To give your spirit boldness. To give your heart boldness before the Lord. That you may stand right before him and that you do stand before, right before him. Because as he is, listen, I need to end the sermon because I'm going to run out the door. Because as he is, so are we in this world. The mission of love is to make me, shh. the mission of love is to make me as he is. And here's the thing. The scripture said, as he already is, we already are. I'm not trying to earn and work for it. When I received it, he already transformed my nature. That as he is, what is he? Holy. So are we in this world. Pastor, I'm struggling with holiness. I'm struggling with living right. I'm struggling with being righteous. How do I do it? Love God. And receive the love. Love will turn your heart around, and it will perfect your spirit. Our God, glory. It will perfect your belly. It's in the love of God. Just love on Jesus. Just keep on coming, baby. Love on Jesus. Keep coming, honey. Love on Jesus. I keep messing up. That's all right, honey. Keep on loving on Jesus, and that love will turn your heart right side up. Come on, honey. It's all right. Let the love of God impact that heart. Let the love of God impact your mind and turn you around in a circle. I know you keep going in the wrong direction. I know you keep going for danger, but keep loving on Jesus, and he'll turn you around. Oh, glory. Glory to God. Keep loving on him, honey. Okay, I'm sorry. Thank you, Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love. Now do we understand that? Now do we understand that? Perfect love. Perfect love is so powerful. The perfect love of God is so potent, it drives fear out. Fear is tormenting you, but the love of God is driving. Hey, glory, I feel, uh, what, I got to go. The love of God is driving fear out. Yeah, yeah. The love of God is to drive fear out of you. 
is to drive the fear out of your belly. Drive the fear out of your spirit. Drive the fear out of your heart. Drive the fear out of your mind so that you may be made perfect in love. If you are still fearing, it's because you've not yet been perfected in love, which means that I need to sit with the spirit and let him perfect it in me. <laughs> it means I need to sit before God and let him put it in my belly. I need to sit before the spirit and let him do it in my spirit and do it in my heart until something turns over in me because it's not by works of man. It is done by the work of the Holy Spirit being born on the inside of me. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. The spirit of the Lord wants to cast the fear out of your life. The spirit of the Lord wants to cast the shame out of your life. In the name of Jesus. Every fear must go. Come on here. I take authority over it. Anxiety must go. Depression must go. It's got to leave you in the name of Jesus. Because the love of God has been made manifest. I take authority over your thoughts. I take authority over your emotions, over your mind. That your spirit will comprehend with all of the saints. To be able to understand the height, the width, the breadth, and the depth of the love of God. That you may be filled and satisfied by the person of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I speak right now in your spirit. The strength to be able to comprehend God's thoughts. To toward you and his thoughts toward you is kindness his thoughts toward you is love his thoughts toward you is mercy his thoughts toward you is satisfaction his thoughts toward you is peace his thoughts toward you is favor his thoughts toward you is goodness his thoughts toward you is kindness receive his thoughts this morning receive it in your mind receive it in your subconscious receive it in your spirit receive it in the midnight hour receive it in your temptations receive it in your passions receive it in your desires let the love of god wash your belly clean let the love of god wash your spirit out in the name of jesus may he uproot every demonic memory of fear and torment in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God, go after every thought. In the name of Jesus, Father, go after the tormented this morning. In the name of Jesus, rebuke him by your power, rebuke him by your spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, increase our capacity to receive your love by your spirit. In the name of Jesus, go down in our hearts, go down in our mind, go down in our spirit, Holy Spirit, feel us holy spirit 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 feel us feel us with the knowledge of the love feel us with the knowledge of his love feel us with the knowledge of his compassion his mercies fell not and his compassion is new every morning feel us jesus feel us jesus feel us jesus feel our hearts feel our bellies feel us jesus Feel us, Jesus. Oh, feel us, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God. God. Yeah, Jesus. 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 Jesus, 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 may your spirit come to know, may he bring your spirit to know, may he bring your spirit to know. The love of God. Everybody standing on their feet. Everybody standing on their feet. May He bring your spirit to know the love of God. The doors of the church are open. If you're in this place today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, we invite you to come to Jesus today. No other love than this. Then a man would lay down his life for a friend. No other love than this, than a man would call an enemy a friend. While we were enemies of God, he made us friends through his work. 
And so if you're in this place today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, we invite you to have a relationship with Jesus today. God has done all that he can that you may have satisfaction in a relationship with Jesus. And so we open the doors of our church to you. And we ask you to come. We beg you to come. We beg you to receive that love. We beg you to receive that grace. We beg you to receive that mercy. You're not going to find it nowhere else. This ain't even about religion or tradition. Ain't no other religion, ain't no other tradition, ain't no other God going to do for you what Jesus has done. You ain't going to find it nowhere else. You can go ahead and look, it's okay, but you're going to find yourself looking back at Jesus. No other kindness, no other mercy has been extended that God will wrap himself in flesh, come down 42 generations, die a horrible death, the death on a cross, and raised from the dead so that you may have relationship with him. What kindness, what mercy. If you don't know Jesus, he wants you to know him. He wants to have relationship with you, and he's beckoning you to come a little closer. We invite you to come.